two-time Pulitzer Prize winner in the New York Times. He's a columnist there, and I often quote him on the show and calling him one of the smartest men in the world. He's out with a brand new book called Thank You for Being Late. Thomas Friedman, welcome to St. Louis on the Big 550 KTRS. Miguel, thank you for having me. You wrote a book called The World Was Flat. I will say the world is upside down now. <laughs> um, this book, you talk about technology, globalization, and climate change. I want to talk about climate change for a second because we can all argue and agree uh, that technology is taking over our world. We all know globalization is taking over, whether we like it or not. But you have half the country that doesn't even acknowledge climate change is real. How do you go about solving a problem in which half the country doesn't even believe it exists? Well, you know, it certainly is a challenge, and I've been working on our president-elect on that issue uh, as well. Um, you know, my approach to it is very simple. Um, if you uh, had a child who was sick and you went to 100 doctors and um, 98 told you one thing and two told you the other, where would you go? Um, you'd go with the 98, not the two. And um, that is the, the definite balance of power around uh, the climate issue uh, with, with scientists. If we get ready for climate change and it doesn't come, all that'll happen is we'll have a cleaner air, cleaner water, more efficient industries. Um, if we get ready for, if we don't get ready for climate change and it happens, we'll be a bad biological experiment. The so um, uh, it seems to me that um, uh, all our interests are in taking this very seriously. The book is called Thank You for Being Late. Explain the title. Uh, the title we got comes from meeting people for breakfast in Washington, D.C. over the years. And every once in a while, someone would come 10, 15 minutes late, and they'd say, Tom, I'm really sorry. It's the weather, the traffic, the subway, the dog ate my homework. And um, spontaneously one day I said to one of them, actually, McGraw, uh, thank you for being late. Um, because you were late, I've been eavesdropping on their conversation. Fascinating. I've been people watching the lobby. Fantastic. And I just connected two ideas I've been struggling with for a month. So thank you for being late. And, and people got into it. They, they recognized that I was actually giving them permission to pause, to stop, to reflect. You know, my favorite quote in the beginning of the book is from my friend Dove Seidman, who said to me one day, when you press the pause button on a computer, it stops. But when you press the pause button on a human being, it starts. It starts to reflect, rethink, and reimagine. And in this age of accelerations of technology, globalization, and climate altogether, boy, do we need to stop reflect, rethink, and reimagine. We also need to at least agree on the basic set of facts. And we all know that the fake news out there, people choose their own newscast, people choose their own news. But the Pentagon, right, the Republicans say, we, be all, we, we believe what the generals say. But the generals will tell you climate change is their number one issue. And yet they still don't believe it. Yeah, I mean, you go to the Pentagon, there are no climate deniers there because uh, they're dealing, first of all, with troops in the Persian Gulf. I begin my climate chapter noting that the heat index in the northern per Persian Gulf on uh, one day in 2015 was 163 degrees. That's a combination of temperature and humidity. And we've got troops operating in that environment. They also at the Pentagon are, are huge believers in it because they understand that most of the migration flow today, McGraw, out of Africa into Europe, those harrowing pictures we see of people um, uh, in these boats on the Mediterranean often tipping over. If you look at those pictures closely, what you'll notice is that most of those people are actually African. They're not Arabs. They're not coming from Syria and Afghanistan or Iraq. They're actually coming from uh, Central and West Africa where, where the drought has simply made uh, life unlivable for, for, uh, for, for so many people there. So you have all these men trying to get out of what I call the world of disorder into the world of order. Thomas Friedman, our guest, this is a must-read book. The book is called Thank You for Being Late. Let's talk about technology and globalization. There are parents today who worry that there will be three jobs in the future. Somebody who runs Facebook, somebody who can come up with the world's greatest app, and all the jobs, the union jobs, the radio jobs, the newspaper jobs, all of those will be gone. What do you say? Well, you know, we've, we've been to this moment before. You know, the most dangerous time to be on the streets of New York City was when horses and buggies still existed, but cars were being introduced. You never knew where you were going to get hit. Um, and uh, had horses been able to vote, we never would have had cars. So we've been to these transitions before. And this is scary. But, you know, I was at a conference um, a few weeks ago, and there was a woman there who explained that her job was tagging sharks for Twitter. 
Now, who ever thought there'd be a job tagging sharks for Twitter? You know, your kids come home from college. Mom, Dad, I want to tag sharks for Twitter. What, you couldn't be an ophthalmologist? I mean, you will never see these new jobs coming. And I think the trick in one of these transition moments is keep our society as open as possible. We'll get the first signals. We'll be able to adapt the quickest. Educate people as much as you can. And then let the magic of America and American creativity work. I promise you there'll be jobs. You'll never see them coming. At Thanksgiving dinner, I was with someone who t told me that uh, they were working for a, a, a new bar uh, chain called Paint It, where um, people come, adults come, and paint by numbers at this bar. And at the same time, you know, they have a drink and they're with friends. Um, a lot of the new jobs are not going to be with your head or your hand, but they're going to be about your heart. And connecting people's hearts is going to be a huge new industry. Thomas Friedman, the book is Thank You for Being Late, An Optimist Guide to Thriving in the Age of Accelerations. Is, is, is a president-elect Donald Trump crazy, or is he crazy like a fox? <laughs> We're going to find out, um, McGraw. I think that that's a very good way to, um, to pose the question, you know. Uh, and and uh, we're, we're now going to find out. And, and uh, he's already backed off some of the more crazy things he said during the campaign. Um, yet, you know, yesterday he was you know, tweeting all day. Um, and uh, I, it's going to be a, a presidency unlike any other. Uh, I just hope that uh, when it's over, we total it all up and, and we discover the country's moved ahead uh, in his own crazy way. I'm certainly not rooting for him to fail because if he does, the country fails. But I would say uh, fasten your seatbelt and put your seat back and trade table into a fixed <laughs> upright position. Can Rudy Giuliani become Secretary of State after taking after it turning out he, he took money from the Iranian government? Uh, I think he took money for actually from an Iranian dissident, okay. group, not, not from the government. Um, I think if he uh, is nominated by Trump, and I think this is one of Trump's worries, uh, his confirmation uh, hearing would be a festival of conflict of interest uh, discussions. Thomas Friedman, the book is Thank You for Being Late. You are the, one of the smartest men in America. Thank you for what you do. Have a good day. Good luck with the book. Thanks, Miguel. Appreciate it. You got it. Thomas Friedman is a three-time Pulitzer Prize winner, New York Times columnist, must read, and now his new book, Thank You for Being Late, 757 KTRS. Listen closely. This will